Okay, so there are four important factors that we need to consider when we talk about the microcirculation and lymph. Those factors are the structure of the capillary bed, that's number one. Number two is passage of the substances across the capillary wall, and there is different substances that pass through. And when you talk about those, then the fluid exchange across the capillaries, and that's number three. Number four, and the last thing is the endothelium-derived relaxing factor. In this video, we'll be talking about number one and two, and in another video, we'll be talking number three and four. So let's start with the structure of the capillary bed. And then we, again, like I said, we'll do the passage of the substance across the capillary bed also in this video. Okay, so uh, the structure of the capillary bed, before we get to the capillaries, let's back up a little bit. Uh, where are the capillaries? The capillaries are all our organs, and if we back up into the, our system, our heart has the aorta, and the aorta branches into the arteries, and eventually we get to the arterioles, and those go into the capillary. And what are the purpose of the capillary? The capillary is the site of exchange of uh, nutrients slash trash that our body has, or byproducts. So. Uh, b right before we get into the capillary, we have something called the meta arterioles branches, which the, the meta arterioles they branch into the capillary bed. And at the junction of the arterial and the capillary, there's smooth muscles band. And these smooth muscles are called the precapillary sphincter. Okay? So these are called the precapillary sphincter. Now, the true capillaries, though, do not have smooth muscle. We need to remember that. True capillaries do not have smooth muscle. They consist of single layer of endothelial cells, as you can see in this figure. Okay, so the endothelial cells, they surround the basement membrane. So you see here the basement membrane, and then we have the endothelial cells surrounding that uh, basement membrane. Here, uh, histology, a little histology endo endothelial nucleus here, and we'll be talking about the penocytic uh, vesicles in just a second. So again, so we uh, remember again, the remembering point is that endothelial cells are part of this capillary, and this capillary does not have smooth muscles. Okay, now uh, we see in, uh, in this figure uh, the intra, uh, intercellular clefts, and the clefts are just pores between the endothelial cells, and those allow passage of water, soluble substances. The cleft also represents a very small fraction of the surface area, which is about... 0.1% uh, of this whole thing. Uh, blood uh, flows through the capillaries uh, through regulated uh, contraction and relaxation of the arterioles and the precapillary sphincters. So a quick review is, we, like I said, again, we have blood coming into the capillaries that come and we have the precapillary sphincter, which is right before we enter the capillary bed. And this is site of uh, relaxation and contraction. So this is how we control flow into the capillary from the precapillary sphincter and uh, also the arterioles which are be before the precapillary sphincter and then we enter here into the capillary we see different structures we see the endothelial cells which uh, are uh, surrounding the basement membrane we see the intracellular cleft which allows for water soluble substances to go through uh, we, uh, as, as you can imagine in this figure this is where the blood is going and red blood cells come here and they exchange do their thing with the oxygen and CO2 and uh, also notable to say that there is tight junctions between also these endothelial cells besides the uh, other uh, uh, clefts here. Okay, so the penocytic vesicles uh, I'm going to be talking about in the next section. So now the next section is the passage of, uh, sorry about this mistake here, but it's, it's passage of substances across the capillary wall. So let's talk about that. What, what are the substances that can get through? What substances can't get through the capillary wall? So lipid soluble substances, which is the first thing here on our, our list, they cross the membrane of the capillary endothelial cells by simple diffusion. So no energy required, nothing is required. They just go ahead and they enter through simple diffusion. Examples of that is oxygen and CO2. Okay, so moving right along here, the small water uh, soluble substances, which I talked about in the last slide, uh, they, these are able to cross via water-filled clefts between the endothelial cells. Do you remember the clefts? The clefts are right here. Water can get through here, through these clefts. Okay, 
moving right along, uh, these is some other examples of water soluble substances that can move through is the glucose, amino acids, small amino acids can get through here, uh, and definitely water. So generally, protein molecules that are too large are unable to pass through these clefts. So in the brain, the clefts, would you, as you would imagine, between the endothelial cells are very, very tight. And this makes the blood bar brain barrier. We don't want just anything going through our brain. So our brain has evolved in order to uh, and not have any molecules just get passed through. So that's why we have the blood brain barrier protecting us. Uh, moving right along, we have the large water soluble substances. Uh, what are those? Those are uh, uh, ones that can't cross by using the pinocytosis. So larger uh, water substances can use this pinocytosis in order to enter the capillary. Uh, another point that I wanted to bring uh, besides here the br blood brain barrier is I want you to know that also in the liver and the intestines, these clefts are exceptionally wide. So it's the opposite of what's happening in the brain, which makes sense. Uh, we are, when we are in the liver or intestine, we need a lot of exchange. There's a lot of exchange happening. So we need these capillaries to be wide. And uh, notable to know that these capillaries in the liver and intestines are called sinusides. Sinusides, spelled as S-I-N-U-S-O-I-D-S. -I, -S. I did not spell it here. Okay, so this concludes uh, our uh, discussion here of the structure of the capillary beds and the passage of the substance across the capillary wall. Next video, I'm going to go ahead and discuss point three and point four. I appreciate your feedback.